In the 1970s, during the Cold War, if you wanted to see whether someone was launching an intercontinental ballistic missile at your country, you had two options. Put a satellite in space, which at that point was expensive, impractical and likely to fail, or build a radar system. But radar can only see to the horizon. It'll show you the, it'll show your missile in flight, but by the time you've seen it, your chain of command might not have time to react. You need to know it's launched when it's launched. You need radar powerful enough to bounce off the ionosphere, spread out for thousands of miles, and still have enough signal to be detectable after it bounces back. You need megawatts of power and one of the biggest radar arrays ever constructed. You need something like this. Welcome to the Duga 3 array in Chernobyl. This was known in the West as the Russian woodpecker. For more than a decade, it randomly hopped shortwave frequencies, trying to find the best one to get a return signal, sending out a repetitive that sounded like a woodpecker. It was so powerful that countries around the world filed official complaints with the Soviet Union, and there was a small industry of woodpecker filters, or Moscow mufflers, that would notch it out on your radio. There's another one about 60 kilometres away, they act as a pair, one transmits, one receives. And they need to be this big to get any sort of resolution, uh, so you can tell roughly, very roughly, where the missile is headed. But the really clever thing is how any radar system like this can tell the difference between a missile and the ground. Because this isn't like pointing a radar into the air. If you're bouncing the signal, then the ground is going to reflect back just as much as the missile that is flying above it. How do you tell the difference? Doppler effect. The same way that the siren on a police car moving towards you sounds higher, the radar reflections from a missile will be at a higher frequency. And missiles move at speeds and measures in miles per second. So Duga didn't listen for the same frequency that it transmitted, it listened for a slightly higher one. If it found that return frequency, well, it didn't happen, fortunately. All that transmission power, all that disruption, was for nothing, wonderfully, because no one ever launched, and somehow, despite everything, humanity got through the Cold War.